Child's Play WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange explaining how easy it would be to gain access to John Podesta's email account. Podesta gave out uh, that his password was the word password. Uh, his uh, own staff said, this email that you've received, uh, this is totally legitimate. So, so this is something a 14-year-old kid, a 14-year-old kid uh, could have hacked. Here now is Morgan Wright, cybersecurity expert. Okay, so it is ridiculous that we know from these emails that John Podesta yes. responded to a phishing scam, which we've all seen and we've all kind of been trained right. not to click on those links. So that in and of itself is a little alarming. But then he responded in the email telling his staff that his password is password, which is also beyond stupid. But if you put all that aside, right. in your mind, does this make it less likely that the Russians hacked since, like, my 10-year-old and his Minecraft computer camp class <laughs> could all do this and hack into his account by virtue of how ridiculous this is? Does it make it less likely it's the Russians or just made it easy for the Russians? Uh, made it easy for the Russians, and I suggest the kids in your son's class do not engage in this. It'll, it'll scar them for life. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is the biggest elect electronic face plant in recent memory you know this is this is something five dollars literally five dollars could have solved uh, and I'm not a, a spokesman for Google but I run everything off of Google I have my accounts there and five dollars per person per month I can enforce policies passwords two-factor authentication if they had just done something as simple as five dollars per month we wouldn't have been hearing about Podesta's emails yes I bet they're all taking note of that you know speaking of Podesta's emails I don't know if you know the answer to this I'm gonna put you on the spot I have been wondering okay. Why have we never seen any emails to or from Hillary Clinton? We have all, clearly at some point, she emailed John Podesta and he emailed her. Right. And we've seen a zillion emails back and forth from Podesta. Why have we, how, why were those never, I always expected it in the last day of the campaign right. or something as a tranche. What's your guess? Well, look, if you believe in conspiracy theories, potentially, or Oliver Stone, and I just listened to a kind of a, a, a unique uh, video that uh, Judge Napolitano did. He posted on, or it was posted on Facebook, talk about, they said it was some people inside the NSA. Uh, you know, so you can read into that what you want. I mean, it would seem, it would seem not to serve Russia's interests, if they are behind this, not to release everything including that, but on the other hand, if there's something really good in there, like classified information, they may not have wanted to tip their hand too much. There's just no easy way to sort this out, which is the problem of cyberspace, Melissa. It is very, if somebody launches a missile like North Korea, instant attribution, we know they did it. Somebody yeah. launches an attack in cyberspace, a little more difficult. I have 10 seconds. You think it was Russia, yes or no? I think their fingerprints all, are all over it. Whether Vladimir authorized it or not, he would have had to, so if it's them, yes, but okay. the report they issued, wasn't up to snuff. Wasn't. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, Morgan. We love having you on. Come back soon. You will do, Melissa. He Thank you. He is great. I he is. He's so smart. Yeah.